so before we get too far in actually finding both answers, what we're going to do is review how to find out how many there are. Remember, the only time you really have to worry about this is if you're given the pair and one more side. If I give you two angles, you don't have to worry about it. And remember, if it's obtuse, you don't have to do most of this either. Or even if it's a right angle, you don't have to do most of this. It's when it's acute that it can cause problems. And the first thing that we always basically want to find is we want to find what is that shortest distance that will actually create a triangle. And we did that by basically taking the angle, and then obviously 17 is the side that's supposed to pair up with it, right? So we take that one and the non-paired sides, we do 18 sine of 63.2. Of course, that is 63.2 degrees. So if you're going to calculate that, what you are calculating is that side right there, which is the shortest possible distance to basically connect that point with this side down here. And if you go ahead and do that, obviously you can do that in your calculator, but make sure you're in degree mode when you do that. What is that shortest distance possible? And I think as long as we keep it in relationship to the other sides, we're good. 16.1. .1. So the next question, we know that this side is 17. So the first question to decide is, is 17 at least long enough to get down there? Yes, it is. And then what I normally do is compare 17 to both of these. Is 17 right in the middle? It is, which means we have two answers. What if 17 was bigger than both of them? You have one answer. If 17 was shorter than 16.1, yeah, it's not long enough to get there. So I hope you agree that that could, it's a little short, but that could potentially go down something like that and create a triangle, correct? And the triangle itself would look like this, 63.2 degrees, 18 here, and 17 there. Do you agree with that? Is this something now we can solve? Yes, it is. Okay. But the problem is, it could also be in there like that. Okay. So that's a slight problem. Either one of those could potentially happen. And so what I would suggest that we do is let's solve this one first. Well, no, let's solve the other one first. Let's solve this one right here first. Because can you agree, if drawn like this, are there any obtuse angles on this one? If you look at the one I have in red right here? No. So law of sine should work for me on this one. Are there any obtuse angles if you look at the one that we have here? Yeah, this one's obtuse. So we're going to stay away from that one for now. So to solve this, we're going to use law of sine. So sine of 63.2 over... 17 equals sine of, well, what do you want to call that angle? Should we call it? It doesn't really matter which one it is. We'll call it angle B if you want. Sine of B over 18. So this is back to something we've been doing, or actually you did last week sometime, where you basically take 18 times that, so 18 sine of 63.2. Again, I hope you're understanding that sine of 63.2 is some decimal your calculator is kind of holding for you. All right? And that's going to equal 17 times the sine of angle B. Unfortunately, our variable is nowhere near being by itself. Uh, we have a sine attached to B and we have 17. Which the easier, which the easier one to get rid of? Yeah, the 17 is easier to get rid of. So let's get rid of that. Exactly. Then we got to get rid of sine, which does mean to take, basically, as was just said, take arc sine of basically all of that, because arc sine does what on the right side? Yeah, it cancels off sine, which is the only way you can do that. And so, yes, go ahead and take arc sine of all of that right now. And again, we're finding B, because this would probably be considered A, and then there's C right there. I think rounding to the nearest tenth should probably be fine. I think we're expecting it to be a little bit bigger than 63.2, correct? Because it's across from 18. Mm -hmm. 
70.9, are we all in agreement with that if you did the math? 70.9 degrees. What's probably the easiest thing to do next? Find angle C. If we got 63.2 and 70.9 used up, what is left over? 45.9? Has the triangle been solved? Not quite. One last thing to do, and it will require law of signs again. And in no way am I saying this is easy. This is what is sometimes considered the ambiguous case of law of signs. If you ever see those words again. So to get C, basically take 17 times that and divide by that. It is what? 17 sine of 40.9 over sine of 63.2. And just be happy you don't have to do this with the tables. Be happy your calculator does a majority of the work for you. Are we expecting C to be more than 18, less? I mean, where, are we, where are we looking? Probably a little less. I've heard 13.6, 13.7, right? That's what some of you have been saying. Has that triangle been solved? Yes, that particular triangle has been solved. But... The unfortunate part of this one, there are two possible triangles that can be drawn. But the nice thing is, is you've done pretty much all the hard work. Okay? But what I'm saying is you've done a lot of the hard work. Because remember, the issue is... That sign is positive in the first and second quadrant, correct? That's the problem. So do you agree that 70.9 is where I went first, correct? And that is, coincidentally, in which quadrant? 70.9 is in the, do you agree maybe about there is about 70.9? Would you agree with that? And so we know that has a particular y value associated with it. How far? Is 70.9 from the y-axis? How far is it from there? It's almost 20, but not quite. Do you agree it's 19.1 from that y-axis? So all you have to do is go 19.1 the other way to find the other angle. What is 19.1 the other way? Because this is 90. 109.1 is... Well, what you do is you find out how close is it to that axis, and you go the exact same distance, because what you're going to do is draw the exact same... You see how those triangles are exactly the same? And so 109.1 is what's going to take the place of that angle over here. Where do you suppose that goes in this picture? Where does the 109.1 go in this picture? There is a question. You need no law of signs to figure that out. You just use your unit circle to find out which one would match up. Because remember, which answer does your calculator give you if you type something in? It gives you the first one. So does it matter if I type the same thing in? It's going to continually give me 70.9. But 109.1, I guarantee, you, will give you the same thing. If you don't trust me, take the sign of 70.9 right now in your calculator and take the sign of 109.1. I got 70.9 from this first angle that we found. That's where I got that from, and I figured out its counterpart. Same exact answer, guaranteed. Now, it makes this one easier, because like I said, you've done all the so-called heavy lifting already. The angle you use is always the first one you go after. Always going to be that first one you went after. Well, whatever the math ends up being, yes. We've got 63.2, 109.1. What's left over? 
Evan? Yes, we have a question. Okay. What I did is I basically went to the unit circle because in quadrant one and in quadrant two, sine both will be positive in both of those quadrants, correct? And what I did is the first one I got here was 70.9. That's the one that could be different. Okay. And so I said, well, 70.9 is basically, and we'll draw it again. 70.9, if I drew it, would be right about there. Okay. And if I drew the triangle in, it would look like this, correct? And sine's just the y value, but I know that's 70.9. So what I did is I said, well, how close is that to the y-axis? Right? And if it's at 70.9, they told me it's 19.1 away from the y-axis. We took 90 minus the 70.9. Okay? And so if it's 19.1 away, if I go 19.1 the other way, does that triangle look exactly the same as the other one? It does. And what we did then is took 90 plus the 19.1 to find the other possible answer. Okay, that's not going to work, but you get the idea. Which ended up being 109.1. I always go to the y-axis, yes. Mm -hmm. You could obviously go to the x-axis, but then you have to subtract instead of add. So that's why people don't do that. And we just have one last thing to finish here then, is to figure out side C. So I would do sine of 63.2 over 17 equals sine of 7.7 .7 over C. Are we expecting this to be smaller than the other C we got? by quite a bit, right? It's only a seven, what, almost eight degree angle there. It's going to be quite a bit less. You're going to put both answers. I'll show you that when we get done. We're almost there. C is approximately... Point six. Here's what I would do if I was answering the question. I would have this triangle drawn somewhere with all the information in it. And then, I, if, yeah, both are answers. Both make it true. And I would also have this triangle drawn somewhere with all the answers in it. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Yes, when they have two answers, it's going to be a lot of points. But remember, the ones you're going to like are the ones that are no solution. Or just have one answer, because you don't have to worry about this at all.